Derek Kirk from Effectatron back with another new Redshift RS Center material lesson here because the Redshift 3.5 really changed a bunch and it brought in the new Redshift standard material. And we're going to take a look at creating metals inside of here. And again, I'm going to give away a bunch of metal presets just to kind of get you some good jumping off points because just like the old uh, RS material, it had those presets that were kind of really nice spots to start off like iron, lead, steel, things like that. So I've just created some stuff that you'll be able to download and just have some good points to just go ahead and start creating. I did some common ones, I think, uh, a lot of people use an arc biz and stuff like that. Uh, so we've got hammered copper as one. We've got just, you know, some regular old steel. We've got some worn edges and we've got some damaged copper as well as just foil and some fancier ones. Uh, we've got gold leaf. So a lot of cool things just to kind of come in and have a nice jumping off points as well as just some fun ones. They're just kind of pretty looking. We have a rusty steel one here with some worn edges and some rust growing on it. Just to kind of have some nice jumping off points as well as just some colored metals so you can get started with we even have some sci-fi ones in here cool all right let's get started real quick i just want to say be sure to check out derekirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on cg shortcuts and my courses on skillshare all of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with redshift so be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out so we can go to create Redshift material is new standard. So inside, we'll double click this. Everything we're gonna need to control our metals is going to be within this base value here and this reflection value, which is really nice. And we don't have to change different types of reflections and different things like that. We only have to control this metalless slider. So let's go ahead and throw this on our shader ball here. All we need to do is take this metalness value and just boom instant metal really really cool so the cool thing is now we can control the color of our metal very easily if you go to pure black like i mentioned in my thin film video it will not show up but if you lift this up just like 0.1 percent you can get a black metal so if you want black uh, i would recommend like four percent maybe i think that's a nice black metal here and so then if you want to you could add some uh, edge color to this just by adjusting the reflection values here if, and these need to be extremely subtle you could do like a little orange-ish and just, just the tiniest bit. It adds a nice little realism to that. Or you could do like a blue. And again, just the tiniest bit of that. And that's just going to add kind of a nice hue to these metals and stuff if you want to create some of a cool look. But the cool thing is uh, if you want to make chrome, you want to go to pure white. And our reflection needs to be pure white. And we have this really... Nice silver, and we're gonna take our reflection roughness down to zero, and we'll have a perfect mirror here. And then lastly for metals, I suggest changing the IOR value to 1.8, and you can adjust this. Different metals have different things, and you can always look those up. An index of, refract, of reflection. Yeah, so you can look up these values, but 1.8 is probably gonna be where you wanna be for most metals. Now for the roughness, we'll see here we have perfect reflection. We can see our little dome light reflecting our little studio. As we increase the roughness here, if this is your first time using redshift materials, you see that just blurs the reflection. So roughness is just blurring that surface reflection. And if we go really high, we're gonna lose pretty much anything that looks metal. Uh, we pretty much, if you go above 0.5, you're gonna lose any metalness look to it. You, you'll get it back as you go lower down. So you're gonna wanna stay around 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.3 and below, I would say, if you want a nice metal material. Obviously just very subtle values make a big difference here. 0.2 is a good sweet spot I like a lot. Now to color this, let's say we wanted to make gold, all you need to do is go to your color up here and we're gonna choose sort of an orangish goldy color and we can fine tune this and make it perfectly the gold we want. We can be more of a, a lighter lighter gold, more orangey gold, like a deep gold here. We can go a little more yellow with it and we can get a little lighter. Yeah, so this is like kind of uh, that participation trophy gold, a little bit like that. Or you can go a little deeper and then just bring in a little bit more of that orange. And you're just gonna be right in the orange gold area here. And you're just gonna kind of find exactly where you want. You don't wanna be too saturated. But like I said, this is why I built these presets because every time I wanna make gold, I don't wanna come in here and do this every single time. Uh, so I like having that preset to just jump right in and do that. 
Yo, that's not bad. There we go. I like that. So now there's a couple things we can do to make this, you know, obviously shinier. It's just like that. And we can bring that roughness up to make it more of a matte gold a little bit if you want a matte finish on like um, some handles or something like that, a doorknob, something. If this is, if you're doing some art biz stuff, it's a really easy way to get that matte kind of finish. You obviously don't want to increase this uh, above 0.5, uh, but you get this nice reflection here. So just keep that in mind. And so now once you have this created, obviously you can save that in your content browser. Um, but basically all we need to do is if we want to add some, some variation to the roughness, so it looks more like fingerprints or something like that, if you have, Textures or anything you want to bring in here. There's a lot of really great textures from places like polygon and textures.com You can go in here and all we can do is we can just say load to right click that little dot Oh my c4d crashed but Let's go ahead and if you have a texture you want to load in here We're going to control our roughness. We're going to use a black and white value map. We're going to right click and We're going to go to load texture it crashed twice in a row. We're going to see if I don't have the IPR going, if it crashes this time. So we're going to right click roughness, go to load texture. Okay, that was it. That was the issue. Is if the IPR is going and you try to load a texture, you might crash. Now we know. Okay, so I'll give these away as well. I made some scratches um, that are seamless. Copies. And so basically we can throw these on here and now we put them in our roughness here. Very cool. So what we can do is we can come in here and we can kind of adjust the gamma on this if we want because these scratches aren't super visible. So let's lower our gamma to make these a little more dramatic here. Very cool. And then again, they're seamless so we can tie all these. So we can go ahead and change our scale to like five. And this is a really annoying feature, but once you type in here, it resets the viewport here. Uh, I've discovered if you click. So kind of frustrating. And so now we've got this roughness here. So we've got these nice kind of reflections going on here and we can go down to our bump map, right click and type in bump, connect node, node, utility, attribute, surface, bump map, okay? And then instead of this bump map, we have our input here. We're gonna right click and we're gonna say te textures and the texture is going to be here because I used it earlier. So we just click that and that will bring that in there and load that texture in. Obviously this high scale is too much. So we're gonna lower that down to like negative 0.2 that will make our scratches seem like they're cut sunk into our surface. And so now we have this really, maybe go even lighter, 0 0.015. Subtlety is the key, negative 0.1. So if we want to take a look at this in our node editor, the way this is laid out, we've got our bump texture plugged into our bump map that's going into our geometry. And we have our texture node for our roughness going into our center material here in the reflection roughness and it's pretty cool that we can actually do this without even opening this up and bringing them in just by right clicking and loading those in there so it's kind of a nice feature and then again to control these you know if you want to adjust your settings or switch out an image you can just load in a different one there by clicking this little folder bring it in and we can adjust the gamma and things on these as well if we wanted to not have to adjust the texture here for our bump map to end up matching what we did to the changes of the first one, all we would need to do is we'll just remove this and we'll, instead of just right clicking and going to texture for this, we're just going to control click the input and we'll just drag this one that we have those changes already made and we're just going to put that right in here into a bump texture input. That way we didn't have to go in and make them match because when you say load texture, it loads in the base texture and any changes you've made to that in the previous node aren't going to be applied because it's going to make a duplicate of a new fresh version of this. So keep that in mind. That it so another thing we could do is if you wanted to use the exact same node rather than going to, um, let's go ahead and replace this. Rather than right clicking and going to textures and grabbing that texture again, we could go to connect node and existing nodes and we could grab that texture that we created so it'll be identical. Textures and things and again, if you have PBR workflow, metalist value is going to obviously plug into the metalist there. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look at creating a couple more of these uh, materials. For steel, what I did is I kind of added a little bit of reflection color to this, like I mentioned earlier. The base color is ever so slightly blue and the reflection color is ever so slightly pink just to kind of give it this nice metallic look because it kind of has a little bit of a color to it. And again, all you need to do to adjust the shininess, adjust the roughness. For IOR around 1.8, 
And then really, we don't need to mess with anisotropy and rotation. You're really not going to need to mess with that too much. And then just remember, black and white values are going to affect your roughness maps. So anywhere that there is a white value is going to be rougher. And that's going to be apply the value of one roughness. And anywhere there's a black value in your texture map is going to be applied zero. And everything is related in between. So if we wanted to add a noise to this, we'll type in max on noise. And so now when we add this roughness to this, we can take a look at this. Go ahead and adjust this noise so it's a very contrast. You can see what I'm talking about here. So we have white values and we have black values. And you can see where the black is, it's going to be extremely shiny because that's getting a roughness value of zero. And where it's getting white values, it's extremely rough. So things you can do, you can adjust the low clip and the high clip to kind of bring these down and make them mix better or lower the contrast of the brightness, all of these things. Uh, affect it. If you want there to be uh, more of the dark value, you're going to want to bring up the low clip and that's going to make more of that dark value for you. If you want there to be more of the higher clip, you just bring it down the high clip and that's going to create more of that high clip value. And the more these get together and they have the exact same value, you're going to get a 50-50 split. So there's not going to be any blur between them. You're going to get these hard edges which can look really nice when you have a nice noise, like something like turbulence or something. So now we're gonna have these smudges and say we don't want this to be so rough, but we do like how these are separated so much. We could take our white value and just bring the value down to say 30, 30%. And that's gonna create a roughness here but we still have our shininess here and we don't like how incredibly shiny that is. So we can bring our black value up and we can bring that up to about 15%. And so now we're gonna have this mix of rough and not so rough. And then again, we can lower these and it will create the more of a gradient ramp between them. And so now we have this nice feathering blur between the high and the low and we're left with this really nice natural looking roughness because nothing's like perfectly clean. Uh, so be sure to add some noise or texture maps or something like that. And you can always bring up the low clip a little more to create a little more dynamicness to this as well as bring down the high clip if you just want these to be a little more dramatic. Uh, again, contrast is basically the same thing. And when you increase the contrast, you're going to make your brights brighter and your darks darker. And if you're increasing the brightness, you're just making everything brighter. So here we go with a nice subtle difference between our noise. So you can see just with the max on noise, you can create these really nice organic looking iron or steel here. And then again, we can go into our noise and again, how to create a brushed look. Let's take a look at that real quick. Take a look at what we're doing here. So I've created a couple max on noises here and then I go into the scale of those down here and I just say a thousand, a thousand in the Y and the X and then 0.1 in the Z and I could go probably lower in the Z and create even tighter lines here. And this is just creating those really tight lines. It's just stretching it out. And I have this just right now is just it's going straight into my bump map and you can combine the different axes into a triplanar note and bring that in and that way you'll get a different way on the top if your object doesn't look right with it um, sliding across, not having those lines across the top that way. Now you can see we have these lines going kind of uh, horizontally here across the top rather than it all being like it was cut out. So if you had something that made more sense for the top to have that matte brush look going this way, like a door, like a, like a handle on a cabinet or something like that, you're gonna wanna use a triplanar node and just uh, stack these in there the correct way. And this way it'll like apply it. It's basically like saying uh, you setting your UV map to cube, but you can adjust which uh, image is going which way. We've just stretched out this Luca so that we can see our noise is just a bunch of lines. And then we add a very subtle bump to this. Our bump value is negative. No, it is 0.015. And you can adjust this. You could say negative if you wanted to and increase it a bit if you want. Really up to you. And then again, for the roughness, we've got about 0.45 on this because you're probably not going to have a very shiny matte brush steel. Most of the time when things are brushed, they're very matte. 
So keep that in mind. It might not look right when it's like that, but if you're going for that look, that's how you do that. And don't go crazy with the bump scale. It needs to be very subtle. Negative 0.015. Yep, so that's how you create a nice brushed matte look. Like with the reflection roughness, the bump map is gonna work the same way. Anywhere where there are white values, it's going to be affected by the height scale of the bump and anywhere there are black values, it's not going to be affected by the height scale. So all those places on those noises where we had those whites are gonna be the most popped out and those places where there's gray are going to be less popped out and places where there are black isn't going to be, our surface is gonna stay where it was. So, so that is how you control the reflection roughness and the color and everything of your metals. So you can see, you can just add a color to this and it'll add a really nice color. Very cool. And then to do things like have worn edges and stuff like that, all you need to do is use the curvature node. This looks very complicated. Um, it's a little tricky because I, I did it. Arrange all nodes in case you didn't know that. Also, there's a tiny window down here that you can mini pretty much you can kind of click and drag around to move around in here in case you get lost and you don't know where it is. You don't have to like frame everything. You always have this window in view here so you can look around and it has everything color coded for you so you can see where everything is. But basically I have a curvature node and a ramp plugged in to make that a little more dramatic. And then that is plugged in with a max on noise into a color layer. Uh, also down here, the same thing, a ramp my curvature ramp into a noise so that it's going to apply on some of the edges and not evenly across all the edges. So you just have kind of a more organic wear and tear kind of look. And then on top of that, we've got a bump map uh, so that our noise is kind of uh, rough here and not just like perfectly smooth. It's going to look more like a micro scratches and things like that. So there you go. And that's just a negative little tiny bump. And that's how you can create some worn edges. You're going to want the curvature node for that. Yeah, metals, extremely simple to control. Now, presets that I've given you, you'll have the ability to just jump right in and start creating and tweaking from the go. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, be sure to check out my other videos. So I have one on thin film and on glasses and plastics. So be sure to check those out, kind of see through plastics, uh, free materials as well in those. And, you know, uh, just, if there's stuff that you want to know more about, be sure to comment that. Any materials and things you need, I think, uh, have give suggestions. I'm gonna put together a just a huge library of materials after all this is done. I think in the next lesson, we'll talk about subsurface scattering. Uh, there's a lot of people asking about the C4D shader, how to use the ramp shader now and stuff like that. <clears throat> so we'll cover that in later videos as well. So once you've downloaded that zip file, all you need to do is create a new category like we'll go to create create category you can call it metals if you want or something cool like affected tron metals and then you can just go to create and say import assets grab that zip file and that'll go ahead and create all that and it's going to throw it in this uncategorized section for you and then you can just select everything and click and drag it into wherever you want okay see you guys next time